In this video, we'll tell you the best things you can do in Washington, D.C., aside from the usual stops at the Lincoln Memorial and the White House. The city that hosts America's seat of government has much more to offer visitors, and it would be a shame to miss the most niche sites. Welcome to our channel, where we share with you all of the amazing places on this planet to put on your bucket list. If you're new here, we trust you're going to like this video, and if you're a subscriber, thank you for coming back. Without further ado, here we go. Washington, D.C. is officially the capital of the United States, but it's only been the capital since 1800. Before that, New York City and Philadelphia held the distinction until the government decided to settle near the Potomac River. Nowadays, Washington, D.C. is home to central government buildings and an abundance of museums and monuments. And that's why we're giving you 10 of the best things to do in Washington, D.C., aside from seeing the usual government buildings. Make sure you stick around to find out how to enhance your itinerary and avoid missing essential sites while still keeping a tight schedule. Let's dive right in. Number 1. National Air and Space Museum The Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum has an excellent aircraft collection, including Amelia Earhart's Lockheed Vega, Charles Lindbergh's Spirit of St. Louis, and the Wright Brothers' 1903 Wright Flyer. They also have exhibits that include a flight simulator, an IMAX theater, and the Einstein Planetarium. The latter two will cost you extra if you want to watch a show there. To avoid crowds, make sure you visit during the morning. People tend to show up around the afternoon, especially during summertime when the weather is favorable. And because there's no fee to visit the museum, you can always come back another time if you feel it's getting too crowded. If you're an aviation enthusiast, then you definitely must visit. The IMAX Theater and the Einstein Planetarium charge $9 for their respective shows but the Planetarium has a free daily show at 10.30 a.m. Number 2. National Zoo and Conservation Biology Institute Here's another Smithsonian institution you shouldn't miss, the Smithsonian National Zoo and Conservation Biology Institute. Yes, it's another Smithsonian, but hear us out. It's a zoo with over 2,700 animals and free admission. Few zoos in America are free, and you should not miss this one. Their panda is one of the zoo's most popular attractions, but you can also admire elephants, apes, and sea lions here. There's even a structure here called the orangutan transport system, where you can spot orangutans swinging from cable to cable between eight steel towers, or you can visit the more exotic animals, such as the ones in the Amazonian exhibit. If you're visiting the zoo, make sure you pre-book your visit. You can get a free entry pass up to four weeks in advance, and the zoo is open every day except Christmas. If you are driving to the zoo, remember that you must pay for a $30 parking pass. Number 3. U.S. National Arboretum Let's take a break from indoor museums and go outdoors at the U.S. National Arboretum. This 451-acre space is home to a collection of different plants, bonsai, and the National Capitol Columns. Whether you want a quiet picnic or enjoy a nice leisurely walk away from the city, the National Arboretum is waiting for you. Walking around a portion of the Arboretum's 9.5 miles of winding road will bring you close to plants such as azaleas, daylily, magnolia, and maple. They even have specific collections that feature groups of plants like the Fern Valley Native Plant Collections, the National Grove of State Trees, and the National Herb Garden. You can also take a break from the greenery and admire the National Capitol Columns instead. Originally built in 1828, the columns were supposed to support the Capitol's dome. These columns didn't make their way to the park until 1984, thanks to a landscape designer who thought the columns would look good at the Arboretum. Number 4. National Museum of National History Here's another free Smithsonian museum for you to visit, the National Museum of National History. With over 126 million artifacts displayed, you're sure to find something that will suit your interests. Some interesting displays include the giant whale replicas in Sant Ocean Hall and the tarantula feedings in the O Orkin Insect Zoo. You can also immerse yourself among the butterflies with a paid ticket to the Butterfly Pavilion or watch a paid screening at the Samuel C. Johnson IMAX Theater. If you're here to see fossils, you might be sad to know that the museum's National Fossil Hall is currently closed for renovations. As mentioned earlier, admission to the National Museum of National History is free. However, the Butterfly Pavilion costs $6 to enter, while shows at the IMAX Theater cost $9. Number 5. Eastern Market The original Eastern Market building was completed in 1873, and ever since it opened, 
it was designed as a space for local markets. The building still serves its purpose today even after a fire in 2009 partially damaged it. Its indoor and outdoor spaces currently host several independent vendors, selling wares such as produce, flowers, books, jewelry, and more. You can even grab freshly baked bread and other treats here, in case you're feeling a little peckish from your Washington, D.C. tour. Oh, and did we mention that the Eastern Market Building is a National Historic Landmark? It's been a market for over 100 years, so definitely stop by this place if you want to shop at such an iconic and historic landmark. If you're enjoying this video so far, please hit that subscribe button for more content like this. It really helps out our small channel and we appreciate it from the bottom of our hearts. Number 6. City Center, D.C. Do you want to change the scenery from historical landmarks and be surrounded by contemporary names instead? Then City Center DC is for you. As the name suggests, City Center DC is right in downtown DC. It's a popular retail and commercial area where stores and restaurants line this five block area. It's a great place to shop or window shop and people watch. It's not all retail and restaurants either. City Center DC also has a public park so you can unwind along with a hotel if you feel like being in the middle of everything. Even if you're not in D.C. for shopping, you're sure to find a great restaurant in one of City Center D.C.'s five blocks. Number 7. National Museum of African American History and Culture If you're starting to notice a pattern here, don't worry. There are actually 17 Smithsonian museums in Washington, D.C. The National Museum of African American History and Culture is one of them. As one of the newer Smithsonian institutions in D.C., the National Museum of African American History and Culture only opened in 2016. Its design replicates the three-tiered crowns from West Africa, while the bronze-colored latticework honors the United States' slave roots. So far, over 36,000 African American artifacts are on display, including photographs of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and artifacts once worn by Michael Jackson. As with the other Smithsonian museums, the National Museum of African American History and Culture is free to enter. They operate using free timed entry passes, and you can book a slot as far ahead as three months. You can also show up without a ticket to gain entry, but they don't start handing out passes for walk-ins until 1 p.m. on weekdays. Number 8. International Spy Museum It might be counterintuitive to have a museum dedicated to something secretive, but that's what the International Spy Museum is for a place to showcase the history and tools of espionage, along with its role in critical international events and pop culture. Once you enter this interactive museum, you'll be assigned a spy identity and an undercover mission. Then you'll go to an exhibit showcasing the history of espionage in real life and pop culture. You'll also see how daily items can become essential spy tools, such as a pen with a camera and eyeglasses with hidden cyanide pills. Pre-booking your visit is highly recommended. Not only will you save up to 30%, but it also guarantees you immediate access to the museum. Prices differ slightly during the week depending on the day, but you can expect tickets to go as low as $23.95 or as high as $30.95. Their ticket price calendar will give you an idea of how crowded the museum will be that day. Number 9. Theodore Roosevelt Island Straddling the state borders of the District of Columbia and Virginia is Theodore Roosevelt Island, an island on the Potomac River, just off the western coast of D.C. It's only accessible via a footbridge from the parking lot and you cannot bring your bike. Once you make your way over to the island, you'll see an informational sign about the island. Keep going a bit further and you'll see a 17-foot tall statue of Theodore Roosevelt. If you're wondering why there's an entire island dedicated to Teddy Roosevelt, that's because the U.S. Congress in the 1930s decided to commemorate the 26th U.S. president and his love of the outdoors. What was a neglected and overgrown island became a natural park with lovely wooded areas and swamplands. Aside from the statue, you can walk around the island to follow about two miles worth of trails. You can also take a free 45-minute guided tour led by a park ranger or a National Park Service volunteer. Number 10. National Postal Museum you might only get junk mail in your mailbox nowadays, but it's still important to celebrate the history of America's postal system. And that's why the Smithsonian is exhibiting and preserving artifacts related to America's postal history. Located in what used to be the city post office building, the National Postal Museum has one of the world's largest stamp and postal history collections. 
They also feature several vintage airmail planes, a railway mail car that you can board, a stagecoach, and a few postal trucks. You can also see old postal tools and uniforms. As always, admission to the museum is free. It's open daily from 10 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. except on Christmas Day. Now that you know some of the best things to do in D.C., here's how you can enhance your visit without adding several days to your vacation. As we all know, Washington, D.C. is a great place to visit, but you can easily get overwhelmed by the number of museums and commemorative memorials that dot the city. To help spice up your itinerary or to make sure you don't miss anything, consider booking a full-day monuments tour of D.C. Sure, you could easily create your own itinerary full of monument visits, but you're bound to miss one or two. That's why joining a guided tour is a better option. You will see the monuments and get insights you wouldn't otherwise know. Or how about booking a nighttime tour of Washington, D.C.'s most popular spots? Everyone goes to these places during the daytime to admire them up close, but have you ever wondered how they're illuminated during the evening? Quite a few companies offer a moonlit tour of D.C. monuments, so you should consider booking one for an alternative view of the city's most famous sites. For a city that covers about 68 square miles, there sure are a lot of sites and activities packed in Washington, D.C. Lack of preparation can easily overwhelm any visitor, and it's easy to miss an essential destination if you don't prepare beforehand. If you found our guide helpful, comment below, and if you enjoyed this video, you're definitely going to love this other video from our channel. Be sure to like and subscribe if you want more content like this. See you soon, and until then, bon voyage!